Ready for a spooky story? It's theory time! Hey hey hey! I'm the Global Cherry and today I will uncover shocking theories on the quarry and its darkest secret. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Don't look behind you! In Until Dawn's spiritual successor, nine teens are camp counselors in Hackett's Quarry, a summer camp in the 80s. Chris, the only adult in the group, assigns rules to the camp counselors. No one leaves the lodge at night, and doors should be locked. He tells them that he's leaving the camp to get them some help in leaving the quarry. However, I think Mr. Hackett will leave them on airplane mode, because he lured them to the summer camp to play a sick game, planned by the bloodthirsty residents. What if we're out partying tonight, out in the woods, and we end up in a most dangerous game situation? Like when people hunt other people? And if you look at the trailer, the names of the camp counselors are being crossed out on a sign, as if they're part of a hit list. We can also hear a man's voice shouting, Terrified kids are bad for business! Terrified kids are bad for business. You have to cut it off! The counselors are being observed by a sinister audience as they go through the terrors, kind of like Squid Game. Jacob is being dragged somewhere naked. Dylan is screaming bloody murder at his friend to cut his hand off. Ryan is shooting a monster. Run! And a creature jumps on Max. Well, I have two theories. Either Wendigo's found a home after escaping Blackwood Sanatorium, or Jacob jumped universes because Twilight is cringe. Let's go with my first theory. Wendigos hunt at night alone, not in packs, like wolves. This could be why Chris warned them not to go out at night. I believe that these are Wendigos, because why else would they have trouble at night, even by locking the doors? Beginning in 1893, miners were plagued by the Wendigo curse after committing cannibalism in Blackwood Mountain, leading up to the events of Until Dawn's prequel, Impatient, in 1952 in Blackwood Sanatorium. So this is where everything started. Sometime after, the prospectors came to mine this mountain until a cave-in trapped the men and woke the curse again. The medical staff observed the protagonist and their roommate, starving them and occasionally feeding them human meat sandwiches. The surviving miners in the sanatorium transformed into a wendigo in 24 hours, protagonist included. This transformation could apply to the people in the quarry, hmm. The curse could have migrated three hours from Washington upstate to New York, the location of Hackett's quarry, and it was auspiciously created a year after Impatience events. I see it now. It's so simple. It's so easy. Ancient Wendigo could possibly be dragging Jacob to its lair to feed on them. Also, Dylan probably didn't know that Wendigo bites weren't contagious, like a certain Until Dawn character. <gasps> Which explains his screams to cut his hand off. A 30 minute gameplay shows Laura and Max getting lost on their way to Hackett's quarry. Like the L word? Lesbians? Lost, Max. We're lost. They remind me of Mike and Jess from Until Dawn, but we've seen what happened to Jess. <laughs> Laura and Max see a naked person crouched in the middle of the road and crash in the dark forest. Before the crash, a creepy middle-aged woman appears behind them. Who is she? Laura helps Max fix the car and notices the same woman walking deeper into the forest. She discovers an escapology trunk with handcuffs and a broken cage. There is also a sign next to it that features a sideshow act by Silas the Dog Boy. Silas the Dog Boy. Silas could be a beast tamer holding a performance, so his nickname makes sense. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the show. His shows weren't doing so well, so people spited him. So, he decided to make some audience members into the beast and give a performance worth dying for. <laughs> Exaggerated laugh. If he can tame these creatures, he already has the upper hand over everyone. The show must go on, so he and the survivors look for new victims to satiate their thirst for entertainment. Unlike Josh from Until Dawn, Silas loves hurting people. <laughs> Josh! How does it feel? Do you enjoy all those emotions that my sisters got to feel once one year ago? Laura freaks out and runs back to Max after the woman whispers, Silas, in her ear. Silas! 
She also sees the dead woman behind Max, but he doesn't see her, strangely. Either the Wendigo is playing with her, or she ate tampered steak and has Wendigo fever. Laura and Max have trouble getting to Hackett's quarry, and request that a cop, Travis, should help them as they are new camp counselors. We're heading up to Hackett's quarry summer camp. We're new counselors. How very odd. What happened to the old counselors? Travis advised them to stay at the Harbinger Motel for the night, but they didn't listen and drove to the quarry. Harbinger means a terrible foreshadowing. They get to Hackett's quarry, but no one is there. This should be a fat red flag, but they didn't listen? What happened to the children if this really was a summer camp? Or did it used to be a summer camp? Through a crevice, Laura later sees a naked man in the bunker eating something. I think it's an old camp counselor with severe Wendigo fever. Hey! Hey, are you okay? Victims of this disease tend to discard clothing after horrific nightmares. The bunker is locked, for a good reason, but Laura wanted to show her boyfriend her lockpicking skills from YouTube. Damn. <laughs> they enter the bunker only for a figure to zip past them and drop a collar with the name Ian. Laura later sees a bloody corpse consumed to the bone. Hacken must have starved two previous camp counselors and Ian became his friend's dinner. Cannibalism unleashes the Wendigo spirit after all, and it must have possessed the friend, putting him in a partial Wendigo phase, like Josh from Until Dawn. Same goes for the man on the road Laura and Max saw previously. Laura wasn't freaked out by the corpse, which makes me think she knows something. Cause if anyone sees a body, they would probably freak out. Max gets attacked by an ancient wendigo, but it spares him, leaving him paralyzed and fearful. I think our imagination- Max? Max! Max! His blood. Wendigos like to play with our food before killing it sadistically. As Laura pulls Max to the bunker's exit, the Wendigo crushes his hopes of escape and drags him back. No! Ooh, ouch. Laura is later subdued by Travis, who screams at the monster if this is the Harbinger Motel. This cop had the audacity to send us to the motel. Does this look like the goddamn Harbinger Motel to you? Well, a lesson we can learn is to not trust anybody and also not go camping. The rest of the quarry's mystery will be solved once the game is released on June 10th. I really like how this game adopted Until Dawn's choices and quick time events. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, share the video, and comment your thoughts on the game and your theories. What is your opinion on the quarry, and who is the next victim? Thank you for watching, and that's all. And remember, don't look behind you!